Welcome back to the Shuffle Squad's YouTube channel. We are here again for another meta forecast where we're going to be talking about the Vancouver Regional Championship. Now, Vancouver is the last tournament in this format before we switch over for rotation. So there's a lot of decks that we're going to want to be talking about and discussing on how you might want to be playing them. Maybe you're playing in a cup or challenge and not going to Vancouver, and maybe you want to play one of these decks too. So we're going to be talking about the meta and how it's going to shape around these and what maybe is going to be the best play for this regional event. So we have many guests here joining us as always. So we're going to hop it over for some intros here. Uh, we'll start it out with Nathan. Nathan, why don't you give yourself an intro, let the people know who you are. Hi, I'm Nathan Ginsberg. I'm a competitive player from San Diego. I got second at my first regionals and masters. Uh, day two a couple times after that. A couple top 64s, 128s. Nothing too impressive after the second, but uh, excited to talk about some decks for Vancouver. All right, very cool. And then we have Piper. Piper, why don't you let the people know who you are? Yeah, um, I'm a competitive TCG player, mostly in Minnesota. I guess now I'm in Toronto, too. Um, I won two regionals last season. Kind of washed this season, but uh, hopefully Vancouver will change that. Hey, listen, you won a couple of regionals in your time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next, our life coach on the chat here, we have Mark. Mark, why don't you let the people know who you are? Uh, I've been washed for all time. I have a few accomplishments pre-pandemic. I have uh, five day twos and a top 16 at NAIC in the greatest format of all time, Zoark, Buzzwell, and Malamar. And then... Post pandemic, only one uh, day two, but really consistently keeping up, loving the game, Pokemon, and also have coached quite a few juniors and seniors that have uh, won some internationals and regionals. So, really involved with the game. Very cool. And last but not least, somebody that has no opinions on any Pokemon decks, Josh is with us here. Hi, yeah, I'm Josh. I'm a, a member of the Shuffle Squad. Um, I play in uh, the Chicagoland area. Yeah, no opinions. And I suck at the game, so even if I had opinions, they wouldn't matter. So That's true. That's No, 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 Josh. Everybody here is great on the panel, so if you want to learn something about the Pokemon trading card game, in this format at least, you're definitely going to want to stick around for what we have to say here. So now I've already covered that Vancouver is the last regionals in this format, in North America specifically. Uh, so it is a last ride for a lot of these decks that we're going to be seeing out here. So we're going to kind of go through and talk about what that means for these decks and how it's going to be impactful to this specific tournament. So the first one we want to talk about, let's get this off of our chest here. We're going to be talking about Mew VMAX. So we're going to hop it over to you, Nathan. I want you to give your insight on how Mew VMAX is positioned in this tournament. Uh, would you play it? How would you play it? Let's go from there. Uh, yeah, so I think Mew is, like, in a pretty decent spot right now. I mean, obviously there's, like, a lot of Roaring Moon and, like, some Charizard, but, mm -hmm. uh, I still think it's, like, pretty good. Uh, Fusion Mew is probably in a really good spot, better than DT Mew, in my opinion right now. Uh, I'm not a personal, like, fan of Fusion Mew. I like being able to go Judge Path rather than just blow something up with the Mialota, but, uh, Fusion Strike Mew, probably pretty good, uh, into Roaring Moon feels like much better than DT Mew. Uh, you also have like single prize attackers into like Chen Pao mm -hmm. and uh, other like relevant two prize decks. As for it being its like last time like ever to be played at a tournament, like regional wise at least, uh, I think a lot of people are going to bring it. And you should probably play Spear Tomb if uh, you're <laughs> questioning because you know it's good against Mew, it's good against uh, like Roaring Moon and specific stuff. Um, obviously, there's like other cards you can play, but you know, Spear Tombs this weekend. That's, that's that. Yeah, and definitely having the fusion package will help with the, the Spirit Tomb counters if there are a lot out there. I mean, obviously, that's not the best course of action. Um, <laughs> if you're trying to beat Spirit Tomb and Path in the same deck, not, not a great time for Mew, but Mew always does well, regardless of the tournament. Um, you know, we always have somebody out there playing some kind of wacky Mew, also, uh, we saw the grass package included. Uh, I know it's it's not good, so don't play I that version. That Portland. Yes, yeah, <laughs> <at> Portland. <laughs> it's 
inconsistent, but yes, it's good against Charizard. Yeah, I Super honestly, Super effective glasses is also pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. And I think that um, you know, playing something just like you said, the Fusion Mew, just keeping it straightforward. If we look at Owen's list, uh, who just won the regional, or was it the regional? <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, special event, special event special in events, Utrecht. That, that Utrecht special event. Yeah, so Owen's list, very straightforward, uh, solid 60 cards in that list. So I think that that would be a list I would model uh, after if I was going to play Mew for this event. Would anyone disagree or agree? Agree. Okay. I mean, Judge Path, baby. And... Judge yeah. Path. Going Judge Path, just switching it up on people. Who cares about Moon? Who cares about Charizard? We're just going to Judge Path. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Josh. I care about both of them. There you go. Um, so as far as that goes, I, I do think that um, Mew will show up in numbers for sure. So let's talk about a deck that probably won't show up in numbers, but it is the last ride for it. And I'm going to kick it over to Josh, somebody that's played this deck uh, a lot in this past you know format in the past season. Josh, why don't you talk to me about Rapid Strike? Because Rapid Strike... Um, I mean, if Mew is going to be big, we want to talk about how Rapid Strike is going to be playing into this meta um, for Vancouver. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Mew is the problem for Rapid Strike. Um, I I expect Mew to probably not be like crazy high numbers. I would guess it's probably going to be like seven or eight percent. Mm-hmm. Roaring Moon, on the <laughs> other hand, is a pretty bad matchup. It's not like the thing is with Mew, and you saw one of my good friends, Alex Kreckler, in Knoxville played Drapion Passimian for Fusion Mew and like went 3 1 against them, I think. Uh, so, like, you can tech for Mew if you're like really, really that worried about it. Um, you can't really do that for Moon. Moon just kind of cooks you like mm -hmm. if they have a slow start like you can definitely like make some cool rapid flow pr plays like i don't think it's unwinnable but it's mm -hmm. certainly unfavored and if we're assuming that moon is going to maintain its number one spot in the meta it's tough it's tough yeah. and that's sad does that mean it can't do well no like they're still going to be mirai on they're still going to yeah. be pow they're still going to be lost box tina charizard all the decks that are like pretty solid matchups for uh for urshi but i don't know if i thought the deck was good enough to play i would play it and i don't right. so right. yeah so that's uh it's unfortunate for all the rapid strike lovers out there i still don't think that this is the event for you but if you like rapid strike and you just want to play it to play it and have fun go ahead because this is the last time you'll be able to play it in the standard format. So Right, and uh, none of the Guardies are playing Moonlit Hill, so that matchup yeah. is still good. Exactly. So uh, that's that's kind of where my thoughts are on Rapid Strike 2, so I definitely agree with you on there. Does anybody else have any opinions on Rapid Strike for this upcoming event? I don't think the Guardy matchup is that good, even <laughs> without Moonlit Hill, but yeah. All right. Well, uh, now talking about it a little bit more, I'm going to pry on that a little bit more, Piper. Let's talk about Good Guard of War. And we label it as Good Guard of War because it's the last time with Shining Arcana Guard of War. And Zacian. And, and Zacian. brushed up all yep. the good cards. All those cards. Yeah. Tears. Tears of... Fog Crystal. Oh, yeah. Fog yeah, Crystal. Say that Ball, that one's been really good. Ball, VIP uh, pass. Yeah, yeah, your consistency <laughs> engine's gone. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you so, just can't find Curlios, but... Exactly. Fun. So now, you know, let's talk about those cards. How well is Gardevoir positioned into this format right now? Uh, what are your thoughts on how you should be playing it? If you should be playing it, let's go off of those. I mean, I think Gardevoir is very well positioned. I think it's been the BDIF since, like, Portland, maybe even San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Like, ever since Maridon just started falling off, that deck's just been in such a good position. Um, we see a ton of top players playing it, doing well. Like, it, it's just really good. Uh, I do think you should be playing Battle VIP Pass. Um, I played both versions. I can't explain it, but when I play no VIPs, my deck just sucks. Um, and when I play VIPs, my deck is functional, so... <laughs> But yeah, the deck is very well positioned. It's very good. If you know how to play it, you're probably going to do very well. Um, as long as you're playing at like a decent pace, you won't tie that much. Um, just know when to scoop and stuff. And yeah, yeah, pretty good. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, 
I've been playing Guardy. You know, Josh has kind of coaxed me into playing a little bit more Gardevoir. Uh, a lot of the other Shuffle Squad players have been pushing me towards Gardevoir more and more. And I do see the power of it. I really see that, you know, all the cards um, are really fleshed out into a solid list. We know 58 of the 60 cards that should be played in a functional Gardevoir list. Um, you know, I, that's where, yeah, Turo. I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, see, there's there's different positions. So, Piper, talk to me about why you're saying no on Turo. Um, I think, like, the Lost Box with Mawile shouldn't be played a ton because all the other Guardi, like, a lot of people are playing Turo and Guardi, so it's like, mm -hmm. the Lost Box deck is just losing those, and now that people know about it, it is just, like, worse off in general. Um, that's just how techs like Mawile tend to be. Right. Um, and, like, I don't know, Turo just sucks. I'd rather play another consistency card most of the time. Like, I feel like Turo is just a crutch, and if you play better, you don't need it. Um, but, yeah. Okay, I mean, I can definitely see that. Um, if we're looking at the meta as a whole, Gardevoir into a blind meta a lot of the time just wants to be more consistent, so you are trying to put in maybe that, you know, second professor's research or an avery or something else just to draw more cards to see more things to have more options um so i can definitely see your your point on that i think that josh is shaking his head yes because i've also given him ptsd with playing enough snorlax stall against him <laughs> that you know, All I'm saying is that my shuffle squad check this month is going to be a little bit bigger because of those matches, PJ. That's true, and that's, that's thanks true. to Turo. Yeah, that is thanks to I Turo. Mean, we've done a lot of testing of the like Snorlax stuff. Uh, if it's regular Snorlax, as long as you don't start one of the little guys, it's like yeah. completely fine. Pidgeot's just bad even with Turo, but mm -hmm. if you're playing Turo Palpat, it's winnable. Like It's much better but oh, yeah. for the Pidgeot, but Pidgeot kind of just wrecks you either way. Yeah, that's true too. All right, well, we'll talk about the other deck that people don't realize is kind of the last ride deck, um, but Iron Valiant, Entei Iron Valiant. Mark, let's talk about Iron Valiant a little bit. Uh, well, one, we're losing rope after this format rotation, and we're also losing Metacham V for the Yoga Loop. So uh, how have you liked Iron Valiant so far? What are your thoughts going into Vancouver with? So I played Iron Valiant at Knoxville and lost a win into day two. Mm -hmm. And then I played it locally. And to me, the deck is a lot like a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. Ente is red. Ferraris are generally red. And yeah. Ferraris are fast. And the deck can go really fast. But sometimes your car just breaks down. And you can't <laughs> move. So the games that you start with that deck. And I've won on my turn one many times with the deck. But I've mm -hmm. also lost just games because I start like a spear tube or yeah. I start just one ente and there's no way to go in. Uh, it feels like we didn't have that deck for long. And that's why I think it feels weird that it's the last ride because it just came to us during LAIC and it went to that run of the final. Noah really put me on the deck before Knoxville because we sat beside each other in Charlotte and he was playing Rapid Strike against stall and he's like i don't know why i'm playing this deck and i looked over at him i'm like i'd say valiant for knoxville and he's like hey maybe so we talked about the deck the tina matchup with the deck i thoroughly enjoyed uh, the charizard matchup thoroughly enjoyed i went 4-1 against charizard at mm -hmm. knoxville everyone was playing Charizard at the event uh the only reason i lost is because my ferrari died uh, in the one match right it just yep. didn't it just didn't start my key wouldn't turn I think the Gardevoir matchup looks good on paper, mm. but Gardevoir can just beat you. They yes. can just beat you, right? They have Cresselia, right? If they get their Jirachi down, mm. and if you need to go aggressive, then they just come at you, right? And right. if Mew is going to be played, Mew's got a very good Ente Valiant matchup. Yep. And Canada loves Guardi. Yes. And there's going to be a huge Canadian population, and there's going to be a huge American population, and they're going to play Gardevoir. And you're going to sit there thinking, hey, I can beat this deck, but then you won't. No. I also think that the Tina matchup is like at best, it's very tight. A, a best of 40-60 because Path sucks when you play Iron Valiant. You, you play four Magma Basin. You, yeah. You'll find those outs. <laughs> you'll find those outs. And Radiant Zard, Radi the, 
the best thing about the deck is Radiant's Art. It also preyed on Maridon a lot. Like if you yeah. ever play against a Maridon deck, uh, yeah. the Moon matchups also like close depending on who takes the first two prize knockout. Mm -hmm. But I think there's just a lot better choices uh, to to play going into this format. And yeah. as much as I'd love to play the the deck again for to see my opponent's face when they start loan sixty HP Pokemon and I went on my first turn, there's I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive a Toyota Camry or a Honda Civic to Vancouver <laughs> and play something that's just gonna do the job every time. That's right. Yep. We just gotta sometimes you just gotta get those points, right? So Iron Valiant uh seems like a good deck, you write, Mark, on paper. Uh feels fine, but if you want to be brave, you can definitely play that deck uh, and just make sure that you got your uh, igniter fluid just in case your engine doesn't start. And last piece of that, Iono is a very good card. I know yes. that it's been popularized now to have the 1-1 one, one Bibrel, mm -hmm. but I believe that he just knows his deck better than everyone. He knows his <laughs> car better than everyone. He yep. played Entei Valiant to every single tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, someone in Brazil top aided with it at Guyana. But for me, I like the really straightforward Ente Valiant, like Noah's sort of deck. And if you get Iono to two, you got to make sure you keep some amount of researches in your deck so that you can get out of it. Because if you don't, then then your very winnable game right at the finish line, that's when your car dies. So, yeah, exactly. It's kind of hard to though, right? Like keeping research in your deck as Ente Valiant. Like there's no real way to like maintain resources in the deck, which is yeah, feels kind of tough. Yeah, Palpad would feel fine if there was space for it but i feel like there's it's so tight like the the deck is is so tight you can't fit a pal pad if you can if you can find a space for it go right ahead but i feel like that's kind of <laughs> where where it lies but so those are are the last ride decks uh we've got those out of the way now we're going to kind of flip the switch here a little bit we're going to go back to you nathan uh we're going to talk about uh the three uh average joe decks as as mark likes to call them um we're gonna talk about maridon charizard or roaring moon uh i'm gonna have you choose your fighter out of the three <laughs> here and tell yeah. us why um this one's actually pretty easy for me it's definitely maridon in my opinion okay. um moon i've always thought is mid like i still don't understand how that's the most played deck in the <laughs> format that might that might be that the like the two decks that I play are Lost Fox and Carnival, but yeah, like those are both two, like two bad matchups for Moon. But yes. I do not like Roaring Moon like at all. Um, yeah. So that's why it's not Moon. And the Charizard doesn't do great into Gardevoir, and I think Gardevoir is going to be very popular. Yes, Maridon is Maridon's the choice. Um, okay, Charizard's like it doesn't do great into Gardevoir, and like it does like kind of okay into Tina. So it it's like doesn't feel as good as it did after san antonio you know it's just kind of slowly been declining and with the expected increase in gardevoir i think charizard is just not it and then maridon a uh, maridon beats gardevoir and it's like from the games i've played it's not even close like if they can get turn one hands yep. you're probably losing and it's like it's like an early lunch you know if gardevoir hits <laughs> maridon um maridon also has like it's it's a relatively 50 50 deck but at the same time if your opponent doesn't draw a good opening hand, Maridon is going to just run them over. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. If if I'm going to play one of those three, it's probably Maridon, and it's really fun. So, yeah. that, is, that is another reason that Maridon is the uh, correct choice. That's true, choice too. You, you hit those generators, yeah. and you're just feeling great. And, uh, you know, I've, I've play-tested it against myself, you know, gold fishing on the floor, just, like, to see how the Guardian matchup is. And you play the double iron hands... And you just go in, and you're like, ah, oh, you know, here's everything I need. Turn one, it feels fine. You play a double turbo energy and just blow up your first Ralts, take two prizes, and then that's that's the game, pretty much. It, you know, and you play high counts of boss, and you just take over the game. So I could definitely see that. All right, well, let's flip uh, also it over. Sorry. Oh, oh, go ahead. For no. having four seal stone against Gardevoir and not using it on your first turn is really, yes. really good as well. Because exactly. not all Guardies play Vacuum, and if they don't, and you get Ion, you're like, okay, I'll just grab Boss and right. take two of cards. As the boomer so, of the call, as the yeah. boomer of the call, and you know we got Zoomer and Nathan Ginsburg here, and it <laughs> does seem so good, there are times where you have to reset for three, and you just draw three Lightning Energy. So it, that, it does happen. Yeah. 
my resets have been lightning energy, peony, and a switch. So, <laughs> so far. And the little little experience I have with Maridon, that deck has drawn so hot for me. Yeah. But I, I definitely can see the, the three lightning energy, like opening Zapdos and like six lightning. Yeah. So Rip. It, it's it definitely hit or miss. For sure. For sure. All right. Uh, let's hop it over to you, Piper. Uh, choose your fighter out of Don, Zard, and Moon. <clears throat> yeah, well, one of my things is I like to play fun decks most of the time, or decks that I enjoy. And Maridon, very unfun to play. Um, I get I get the seven energy, or the six energy hands a lot, you know? Moon is also pretty unfun to play, because your deck kind of sucks. Now, Zard, if we're looking at Utrecht, you know, there's this really cool uh, top four list. I don't know if you've heard of this guy before, Tord Reklev. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, he has a really cool Zard list. <laughs> that, that list is really fun. Um, but I, I would definitely pick Zard. Uh, just because that list is pretty awesome, but yeah. Yeah, I do like. I I played the Tord Zard list, super fun. Then I played it to an online tournament, super inconsistent <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. So I don't want to run into that. I do have some uh, cheeky text that I want to add into that that I'll talk to mm-hmm. everybody about after after the, <laughs> this meta forecast. <laughs> we can't give out the leaks just yet, but the, the Tord box looks really cool. Uh, on paper, I think that it's very funny, um, but it's very fun. Yeah, so I, I guess I could see that for sure. Um, let's hop over to you, Mark. Who are you choosing out of the three for your deck if you had to choose? So if I was going to tell someone if they wanted to try to win the tournament, like I would tell them to play Maridon because if yep. you just get the right matchups going to this tournament, you can win the tournament. I am a boomer. I did talk about playing with a Toyota or Honda Civic. So I'm going to choose my boy Lizardon <laughs> as we throw a lot of operas to the floor there. And what I want to say is I was really against this deck. When this was like the best deck everyone's playing, I'm like, everyone's playing it. The decks, anyone can play this deck. Anyone can win. But that's what actually makes the deck good is because the cards are just so powerful in it. And they're still innovating. So in Utrecht, we saw, you know, double Charmeleon in one of the decks. We saw Bibrel come in the deck. In Goyana, they played V-Guard energy. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, what's this V-Guard energy for? Like, what what's the point? But it actually kind of swings your Tina matchup because they can't just boss your Pidgeot in the game plan everyone's taught to 280 a Pidgeot. And if they use their V-Star attack on your Pidgeot, you're laughing because then your Charger is just going to take four prizes after, right? Because they won't right. be able to. So this... I'm going to, this is where I'm playing the Vancouver. I'm going to lose. I'm going to take those games. Everyone in Knoxville, I said, hey, you're going to dead draw with Charizard at least once per match. And I'm just going to hope that the games that I don't dead draw, I win. That's right. That's interesting. Right. I like that. The V Guard is nice into Guardy, too. Like your oh, late yeah. game Zard, you can stop them from, I mean, Zacian needs what, 10? They need 10. They need the full, they need the full 10. So if they, they don't have, but you know, Josh, you're going to draw it. I lost to that today. I put a, (laughs) I put a V guard. They had nine energy. They were fine then twice. And then they're like, they're like this. And then they played research. And then they were like, oh, I have the energy in my hand. So yeah, in theory, (laughs) it's nice on paper. You can also kind of play around it by just like not evolving into a two prize or forcing you to go down to one prize and then just killing with baby guardy. But it is cute. Like it is yeah. it is cute. Like if they're not expecting For people it, that haven't have played Guardi nonstop, like you probably you have a chance, but for, right. for top players, like that we'll figure it out. So you just gotta hope that when they're drawing off the refinements, they miss their Akanas and they miss their reversal energy. Right. You, you yeah. live with that. Yeah. Right, right. All right, let's hop it over to you, Josh. Which which of the three are you choosing and why? Right. So uh, I actually am also going to pick Charizard, but I'm going to okay. kind of work backwards. Sure. I agree uh, with everyone else that Roaring Moon sucks. Like, that deck <laughs> is just, like, not very good. Uh, but it's really easy, really straightforward. Like, if your goal is to go into the tournament and not make a single mistake the entire tournament, Roaring Moon is, like, probably your best option. Um I would think. I mean, I, none of these three no, decks are really... It's definitely block locks. I don't know if that's true. I think if you hit the right matchups, I agree with that. But in the Tina, like, there are a lot of games that are very winnable that if you pilot it wrong, like, you, you just throw it away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lost my win in at Charlotte. 
because I had feels when Evan Campbell in game two, like brought back a game two that I didn't think I could win. And in yeah. game three, I emotionally said, I just want to knock him out. I'm going to go second. And like, I didn't want Tina to go second. And he went path to the peak. And I yeah. <laughs> yeah. did not I mean, do like, anything. Right. It, it definitely, I think like there are places for every deck to just be piloted incorrectly. But I, I would say Moon... People hate playing Lax. So maybe Piper is right that <laughs> yeah. it's Lax, but like nobody's playing Lax except for Calvin and like we can let him do whatever he wants to do. But I feel like Moon is pretty straightforward and like it's fast, right? So like sometimes you just run your opponent out of the game. I actually think Maridon is the biggest bait for this tournament. I have heard everybody talk about how Guardy's gonna Guardy's gonna blow up and play. Guardy's gonna blow up and play, bro. It's it's the second coming of Guardy. Guardy's coming back. <laughs> and every single tournament, it's nine percent. Every tournament, people are like, bro, Guardy's spiking. It's spiking. And then it's nine percent every time. Like, so you can play Maridon, but if you're playing Maridon, you have to understand that you are taking a slightly unfavorable matchup to the highest played deck in Roaring Moon because it's much easier for them to one shot you than it is for you to one shot them. Especially if they and come you are taking second. Right. And you are taking a bad matchup to Charizard. Like yes. bad. If a Charizard player knows what they're doing, they should never lose that matchup. Radzard is crazy into Maridon. Yeah. yeah. Like back back in the day, back when pre Azul literally breaking Charizard for every tournament, that matchup was fine. But now mm -hmm. like Radzard being back in list is just so hard oh, yeah. for Maridon to deal with. So like if you're assuming that those two decks have the percentages that they've been having, that's like <laughs> a third of the field that is just yes. like a rough matchup for you plus Whatever other matchups are not great. You do take a sick Tina matchup. I think that's really cool. And if you hit a bunch of Tina, you hit a bunch of Guardi, you hit a bunch of Lost Box that's not playing Mawile. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Because Kyogre still kind of claps you, to be honest. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. They like take is a little... sit back. Right. Guys, they can beats... have a Mana Phoenix deck. Okay, Nathan's yeah, got a manatee yeah. in his deck for that matchup. Right, right. Yeah, I'm. He's, I'm, he's I'm, ready. I'm, I've Kyogre <laughs> too many. Mal I've Kyogre too many Maridons to not yeah. put a manatee in my Maridon deck. Right, right, right. That is yeah. right. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Maridon beats the two best decks in format. The issue is we're in a format where the two best decks are Tina and Guardi, which are like relatively high skill decks, and so they don't have the play rates that something like a Charizard is going to have. So I think Maridon is massively bait. I think Charizard is a deck that if you play it well the whole tournament, other decks are way better at cooking themselves than than mm -hmm. uh, Charizard is. So if you just like set up your board and let your opponent play badly, like you can win any game. Okay. So I would say Charizard. Cool. Well, uh, we're going to move on to a highlight spot here in the meta forecast. I want to talk about this deck, and I want to see if you think that it's a little bit too soon, but I think that the deck's been doing well in a lot of tournaments that maybe we should start talking about it a bit more before it gets really, really good in the next format. Uh, we're going to talk about Chen Pao. So, Nathan, I want you to give me your insights first on Chen Pao. How do you think it is right now in the meta? Uh, is it something we should be considering going into this tournament? Right now, I'm going to say it's not bad, but I, like, I cannot play Chen Pao. Like, I've tried the deck. My opening hands are, like, Bidoof, um, Pass. Like, I, I cannot play that deck. But I do think it's good. If, if you're, like, Jared Grimes or, like, anyone else that, like, only plays Chen Pao and, like, your hands are like fine i think the deck is like pretty good it's good into like gardevoir depending on mm -hmm. obviously if you go first or not but um the deck is like it's it's solid like it obviously gets like so much better post rotation like combining counter catcher into one or sorry uh cross switchers into one card yeah and then giving us malo back in cypher maniac is like is that is ridiculous with, you have three ways to draw it with pokey stop greninja or Beeperl, but right now it's good, but I I can't I I can't play that deck. <laughs> but it's it's good though. It's good. All right, all right. So Piper, thoughts on Chen Pao? Yeah, I mean the deck is good if you draw well. Um, I think it's kind of similar to Maridon, where like 
you do well when you high roll, except its matchups are, like, less polarized than Maridon. Like, mm. your Guardian and Tina feel, like, less good. Um, your, Zard is, your Zard and Moon are better than Maridon, but still, like, Zard is pretty close. Um, yeah. Your Moon matchup is favored, I think, but very slightly. Um, I don't know. It, it's still very... It's probably a bit more high rolly than Maridon, though. But you do have like a slightly better matchup spread, so it kind of just depends what you're high, um, prioritizing. Okay, um, Mark, what are your thoughts on Chen Power right now? I have two sentences on the subject. Yes. One, Cameron won a regional with Chen Pao. Then he stopped playing it. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, you know, we've we've been seeing uh, a little bit of hype, obviously, with the, the double Iron Hands build. Um, it, I don't know if I like that at all um, or, or what, but I don't think Owen has put his stamp of approval on, obviously, switching over to Mew uh, either. But that's kind of uh, where my thought process was at, too, on there. He said he switched to Mew, too, because he did not want to play the Mirror. Ah. And he felt more people were picking it up. But in, in all essence, the deck has been around since the start of the format. Since Pittsburgh, we've been playing against this deck. And every yeah. time we're told that this, this, oh, since NAIC last year, this deck was around, right? That's why we, yeah. that's Jared, Jared Grimes, uh, Owen Rhodes, they came with this deck. It, it looks good. You test against it and you just go, I can't let anyone that I coach or that's in my play group play this deck. Yes. <laughs> well, we're going to move it over to you, Josh, because I know you got some insight here. You're friends with Jared Grimes. You know how Chen Pao, you know, I've talked to Jared a little bit about Chen Pao too. And, uh, you know, Owen Rhodes beat the crap out of me at NAIC last season <laughs> with it. So Owen Rhodes. <laughs> that's the first, <laughs> first matchup I didn't want to see playing Arc Dura. Uh, and know, uh, day two, that's how I started. But Josh, talk to me about Chen Pao uh, right now in the form. It's fine. I don't know. Yeah. Chen Pao's fine. Like, yeah, you... it's a deck that's fixed a lot by best of three because, yeah, you have a lot of games where you just, like, Brick. you've passed, right? But, like, yep. the deck the deck is, like, inherently really strong. Uh, yep. I would never play it. Like, if you consider yourself a lucky person... Go for it. But, and I mean, like, the issue with Chen Pao, I think there's this, like, misconception that the deck is, like, super lottery focused. The thing is, it's inconsistent and, like, concentration intensive, where, like, mm -hmm. you can lose games by not playing games, and you can lose games by getting, like, by making a sequencing mistake and, like, getting rid of all of your back's calibers, right? Like, right. to me, like, if I was going to play a deck like Chen Pao, I just wouldn't play Chen Pao and play something else. Post rotation, completely different. I think post roto, very strong. Prime catcher is insane. Buddy Poffin, Buddy Poffin fixes every issue with the deck. Because right now you have to choose first. And if you miss turn one VIP pass, you're cooked. But now you can Buddy Poffin turn two, which is just insane. Right. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. C Pao seems fine. Like if you like C Pao, you think you're good at C Pao, play it. If not, like yeah. play anything else. <laughs> All right, perfect. So let's uh, let's focus on another deck I do think is actually really well positioned for Vancouver. We're going to talk about Giratina. Uh, we'll go back to you, Nathan. Um, I've been playing a lot of Tina lately uh, to get ready for Vancouver. What are your thoughts on Giratina right now? You like comfy um, decks? I do. I do not like comfy decks with a three-three line of inconsistent Pokemon. Though. Ah, okay. Um, I think I think Tina's good. Um, just when I'm flower selecting, I prefer to have, like, other cards, you know? Uh, I think Tina's good, though. Um, it has, like, a good matchup spread. Like, I could never do, t like, one shot a Charizard with, yeah. uh, like, Dragonite and stuff. But, you know, Tina can. Mm -hmm. um, it also has Roxanne and Path, you know? That's, like, yep. that's just that's just Judge Path, but even better, you know? <laughs> right. um, Tina, Tina, Tina is really good, though. It has, uh, like, a good matchup spread. It's one of those decks that, like... You never just lose when your opponent flips over something, right? Like, for example, if you're playing Guardian, you flip over a Ralsei, so your opponent flips over him right on, you're like, okay, cool, lunch break. With Tina, whatever your opponent flips over, you this guy loves to eat. So it's a very, like, 
Yeah. Don't, it's, <laughs> I do. I love food. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's 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 one of those things where like you never you know, you don't you don't take a bad matchup necessarily. You always get to play. There's always like an opportunity to express your skill. So for that reason, I think it's a really good deck. If you're if you're confident in Tina, you should definitely play it. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't switch the slate, but uh, I do think Tina is good. So absolutely. Yes, okay. I agree. Cool. Um, Piper, from the person that wants to go first with Gardevoir, uh, when I have Cramorant in my deck and can pretty consistently get it out, what are your thoughts on Giratina into this format? I mean, it's, like, fine. I don't think your Guardian matchup is good, okay. but, I mean, people think that's not true for some reason. I don't think they've played against the best Guardies, but I don't know. Um, Tina's good. Like, there's not much else to say. One of the issues, like, while you are in every game, that's also not great because then it's a lot harder to tell when to scoop, which it's also a very slow deck, which leads to a lot of time issues. Because sometimes your opponent does just sack you off the rock sand and hits boss or research into, like, whatever combo they need. And, like, uh, it kind of sucks. Um, so if you're, like, comfortable with the deck, yeah, it's a pretty good play. Um, but... Okay. I don't know. Like I flower select. I'm this. I feel the same thing as Nathan. It's like I'd rather these were two different cards. Like these, the deck just sucks sometimes. Yeah, that's true. You get those uh, Tina hands sometimes. It happens for sure. Um, I've seen some other techs come into Tina to make some of its alternative matchups better. We've seen things like Avery come in to help with a Guardi matchup. I've seen Spiritum come in to help with not only the Mew matchup, which I think is still pretty fine, um, but mm -hmm. also to help in the Moon matchup, so Galarian Moltres V uh, is stopped. So, Mark, what do you think about some of these techs being added into Giratina? Is it going to help it win the next regional? So, I'm a, I'm a Christian, and <laughs> I celebrate Lent. Yeah. And for Lent, you usually give up. You make a Lenten promise to give something up. And I gave up playing lost box decks for Lent for, for, for a period of 40 days at CP level events Okay. to yeah. stop myself from playing Tina because I actually played it a lot before. It was the only right. way that I could do it. I made I made my promise to God that I, I yes. wouldn't do it. Yes. Yes. But I've been coaching some Tina yeah. lately, and the deck is so good. Like when you yeah. draw so well I know. and you get the things, and you can just 280, and you can, you can tech as you're saying. You know, you put the Spirit Tomb right. to try to help your matchups. But when you get those games where you – you, you draw everything and you can just stream 280 and Star Requiem and then a Sableye and a Cram. But that's six prizes. Yeah. Right? Like the map, the map adds up. Path, Roxanne. Like these are, I'm, you know, it sounds like I'm just saying cards. But in these combinations, these cards are very powerful. And, you know, Coach Mark here. We can't <laughs> argue with numbers all the time. And John Engs win in a, yeah. in a mirror match, right? And Grant Hayes lost to Azul in that final. And and Vinny's win at the biggest regional at the time it was, in in our turf in North America, the the deck is just if you can overcome the sum of your parts and you know the deck inside out, Nathan's absolutely right. You always get to play even if it's just abyss seeking. Sure, yeah. there are times you you scratch with Sableye. Yep. Sometimes you just scratch with Sableye and and hope that it comes. Those are the worst games. <laughs> but. But I, I wish that, you know, maybe I, I gave up, like, potato chips or something because, like, part of me kind of wants to play it for, for, for Vancouver. Yep. Yeah, I, I could totally see that. Josh is like, we're going to be friends after this call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is I, I played Tina for the, the first half of the season. I loved Tina. I even played Emo Tina a little bit. We put the uh, Roaring Moon in there. Uh, oh. Loved it. It was, it was funny. Uh, but not not funny enough, and then I had this. You get a Star of Queen twice. You get that's a Star right. of Queen twice that's, with that's, a Tina, and you how do you how do you lose? Yeah. And then you on your flight home from San Antonio, going, <laughs> why did I do that to myself? <laughs> but here we are. All right, Josh, talk to me. Tell tell me why I'm wrong about Tina winning this regional. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are about Giratina overall, and for Vancouver. I agree with Piper. I think okay. I think if. Tina and Guardi are going head to head. The matchup swings viciously based on the skill level of each side. Okay. Uh, if both players are playing optimally, I think Guardi is favored. If both players are average, I think Tina. 
I think Tina is very good, right? Like, like Tina is a deck that is really good at, uh, oh, uh oh, can you hear me? Hello. Oh no, you're here. Okay, great. Uh, I think Tina's a deck that, like, because of Roxanne Path, is really, really good at punishing players playing badly, right? Like, if you are not preparing your game plan against Tina every game for the turn that they're going to play Roxanne and put Path to the peak down, you're probably going to lose, right? Um, but most decks don't have to play into that, right? Like, even Guardi can do a lot of cute plays, and you see some of it on stream, right? Where, like, you'll see somebody scream-tailing a, a Giratina to set it up for a, a later knockout instead of finishing a KO. Like, you can always make plays like that into Tina, and if a Tina player sees that you haven't taken more than two prizes, they just cry because they know they've lost. Because also, like, the turn that you go... So, like, if you just let Tina get ahead of you, you just play Iono and then go below four prizes and the odds of them finding their Roxanne and their path and everything is so low. I, I don't know. I think Tina is good. I think Tina, I would say is the second best deck in the format, but I think Guardi is, I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's fine. I don't think it's going to win. Okay. All right. All right. So I want to add something. Yeah, absolutely. If possible. Okay. So first, um, Tina is very easy to play against, I feel, but I don't think most people know how to. Yes. Um, I played, like, Lost Own Glasses to, um, Noxel, and I went 5-0-1 against Tina's. Like, I didn't play Manaphy or Jirachi, but it's, like, if you just, like, bench manage and don't get punished from that stuff, um, a big thing I was always doing is I would never go to three prizes. I would go to four prizes, and then just sit there and wait for my opponent to do something and then go to two prizes because it's like they don't play Iono, they can't disrupt my hand, mm -hmm. like uh and they can't rock sand, so I'm just waiting to go to two prizes and then I only need one turn to um I only need to take one more KO to win the game. And then I usually get an extra turn to do that because they're probably gonna be at like three prizes. Mm -hmm. Uh and then the other thing is I think Avery is a really bad card in the deck. Uh you never find it when you need it, because most of the time when it's, like, still effective, you need to Colorus. And you also have to find the one of, which is very, like, impossible to do. Like, if you're really lucky, then it's good, but, like... Yeah. In a 15-round tournament, I'd rather just play a better card, like, fourth Nest Ball, which feels yeah, so good in the deck. Exactly. Oh, yeah, fourth I Nest Ball. I think we're talking Honestly, about, like... That's exactly what I put into my list. The, the resilience of Tina, though, if you really talk about it, I don't think I've ever seen another deck get put in an air fryer and survive like Tina did. So I think we need to give Tina <laughs> florals. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, if you're you're gonna air fry a, a deck, uh, number one tip is to first uh, batter it, uh, and oh, two, yeah. pick something else other than Tina because it's already been done before. So we don't want to see that anymore. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's talk about. What if like Tina tastes like really good though? Like uh, it does. You know? It does. Um, <laughs> anyway. Let's talk about some uh, championship points because I know a lot of people going to Vancouver regionals are still chasing their world's invite. So they want to know, uh, myself included, what the de best deck for just making championship points is going to be. So we'll, we'll kick it back off. Uh, start with you, Nathan. What deck would you recommend to somebody uh, at an average skill level to pick up and just get average. some points? Got it. Okay. Uh, Depends on how many points. Would you consider like day two ish? Just yeah. like that. Yeah, let's go with okay. day two. Okay, I think Charizard's probably a good pick. It's like relatively consistent. It draws enough cards, and if you're at an average skill level, you should be able to play Charizard like pretty effectively. Okay. So I think if you're just like going for points and the goal is like to just day two and just finish somewhere in the middle of the pack in day two, I would suggest Charizard. But okay. that's that's the uh, safe pick for points, in my okay. opinion. And Piper, what about you? It, like, it depends on the person, you know? If they, like, really just don't want to have a fun day one, you know, I'd say play Blocklax, you know? Um, just, you're going to win. Like, in, in a field of so many players, you're going to play against people that aren't, like, amazing and playing against control decks, and you're just going to win games tonight. You're also just going to hit auto wins, which is, like, pretty good. Um, you can beat Tina's that don't know what they're doing with regular Blocklax, which is nice. Um, 
So like, if, if you if the person will just wants points, like no matter what they play, then I'd say Block Box is really good. Okay. Otherwise, Zard or Moon um, are also like pretty good. Um, just they're easy to play, very strong decks, but yep. a bit more interactive than uh, Lax. Got it. All right, Mark. What about you? What deck would you recommend? The last regional we had in North America was Knoxville, and this deck yep. put thirty copies into day two. And we've all talked about how we think Charizard's like a very consistent play and it's very lucky. But Roaring Moon is that 30-piece 30, 30 deck. And if I was just trying to get points and I wanted to make the least amount of mistakes, and I know we've talked... And I know, Guardy, Josh, we're, we can we can bat... We, we should start our own, like, roast show against each other, you know? Just <laughs> first take for Pokemon. But if if you if you lose to Guardies early enough in the tournament with Roaring Moon, because you can afford to, to take some losses and all the good Guardi players are winning, then you'll dodge them in the rest of the field and and just and just hit double dark patch. That's right. You know, Morpeko is a good attacker. It seems seems fun. No. <laughs> but, it's not no, very I can good see. actually. <laughs> like I feel like with Guardi you only lose to just hard breaking or like starting Zation and drawing like crap and like drawing mediocre. Yeah. Like you can win that from three prizes down if like yeah you can win it from two prizes down if your opponent resource manages poorly. Oh. I won I won <laughs> top yeah. four of a cup down two prizes to six by going counter catcher Greninja Iono and scream tailing for six prizes. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's another thing. But we're we're talking about. I want to be part of your cups. I want to go to your cups. Yeah. Playing into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> this Come is, to this Chicago is without water or lightning, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's just, just, just straight darkness, just, yeah. st- mono dark. Gotcha. The water, the waters makes that matchup a little more interesting, especially yeah. with the cologne. I mean, I always bench Manaphy. I have the bench space. I'm not Fair taking enough. the risk of just losing yeah. Moon. Right. Uh-huh. Definitely, definitely grab Manaphy as well. That's why she's a regional. You should, anyways, too. because yeah. especially if you have. If you oh, have yeah. Greninja down, if you, bench Greninja, yeah. you have to put Manaphy down because they can put three energy on Mew and boss it. Uh, so you should yeah. put Manaphy down anyway because you want Greninja in that matchup most times because you have to play aggressively. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. have to maybe is a strong word, but... Yeah, it's more so that, like, you need the two... Guard- you you can't, like, reversal KO stuff, so um, you need to have Guardi and Guardi X, which, like, lowers your number of refinements. Right. Especially because they're taking prizes aggressively. Like, if they KO a refinement, then you're down a refinement, and you have Mirage Step in place. So it's, like, less draw overall, so Greninja gets you the extra draw and energies and discard to uh, pull off the plays you need to. Right. All right. Yeah. But, I, yeah, I agree. Sure, I, I do... I agree. Also, um, Mark, I think that that's a, a really good choice for somebody that maybe new to the game, just playing their first regionals, or or wants to like day two for the first time, playing a playing a Rory Moon. Uh, Josh, what would you say is the the most recommended deck in your opinion for points or day two? Yeah, swimming? not to sound you know like a copycat, but I agree that it's Roaring Moon and Charizard. Um, I'm down okay. for the roasting thing, but I do agree with you. I think we need to start our own show. We need to start our own show. I also show. think. Uh, I think... <laughs> I'm in. I'm down, bro. Yeah, I think. I think like Roaring Moon is mediocre, but like the the average day one experience is not you playing against really good players. It's you playing against average players, and like Moon is consistent and auto KOs anything so like i think if your goal is to make day two you should play moon if your goal is to win the tournament you should burn moon (laughs) put them away (laughs) uh but yeah i would say zard zard or moon i think zard again zard is very strong very consistent being able to search your deck for any card you want is really good so yep all right cool so hot take uh hot hot take uh, we're going to round things out. Uh, so the top three played decks prediction part of our uh, metaphor cast. We'll put it back to you, Nathan. Uh, what are the most played decks? So the top three for you. Uh, what are your predictions? Uh, number one is probably going to be Moon because okay. people insist that that deck is like anything real. But that's probably going to be number one. Number two is probably going to be Tina because everyone's been playing Tina. 
And then the third one is probably Charizard. Like, okay, it feels bad leaving off like the other decks, but Guardi's probably gonna like come in fourth, or maybe even fifth. And then Mew and Maridon are gonna be a little lower. So yeah, I think those are the big three contenders. Okay, uh, Piper, your thoughts? I think it's gonna be Moon first, Zard second, and then I think it is the last event. There's gonna be a lot of Mew copers out there. I'm feeling number three is gonna be Mew. I I can see like, that. Gotta play it one more time, you know. Yep. <laughs> Hitting the turn one Meloetta feels too good. Yeah. So you're telling me play a, a grass or a dark type deck. That's what. <laughs> I mean, Excelgor is grass. Yeah, that's true. Let's go. Yeah. All right, Mark, what are your top three predictions? I'm going to go with Roaring Moon, Giratina V Star, yep. and Charizard. They okay. started us off, and they'll send us out. Oh, Roaring Moon. Roy Moon actually flat yeah. was not did not start us off because we all said that deck was bad and then it came back with a vengeance when you know NASA piloted the deck to make everyone want to jump in a spaceship and take KO their opponents on turn turn one. But yeah. yeah, those will be the three decks. Okay. And Josh, your three predictions. Um I'm gonna say the most original thought ever and say that Roaring Moon will be number one. Uh Okay. I do think Charizard will be number two. Uh, okay. And then I would say Tina number three. Um, Got it. Yeah, I think I think there will be some sure. Mucopers, but not that many. <laughs> no, you're, you're probably right, but, you know, it's like last event, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So these are Piper the was just trying to mix it up for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. honestly, <laughs> I knew we were all going to say Tina Moon and hey. Zard, yeah. like... Game Smart lost with Moon to Mew at the Game Grid tournament on Friday, you know? So anything can happen. That's right. There you go. So those are the decks to be prepared for to watch out for if you are attending Vancouver Regionals. Now we're going to hop to my favorite part of these meta forecasts, the <laughs> rogue decks, the top rogue decks that everybody wants to do well. Um I'm going to start out here because it is my segment, my show here, uh, and say that my top favorite rogue deck right now is going to be the Pidgeot control deck. I think that I would love to see that do well in this tournament. Uh, maybe not the one with Radiant Charizard, maybe the one with Radiant Charizard. I just want to see that control style list do well. Is that uh, a rogue deck? It just won a, a regional. I, yeah, but <laughs> that deck is it's really like consistently good. cutting too. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's uh, it's rogue ish right now. Yeah. It's, it's becoming more meta, but it it's also played in low numbers in these tournaments too. That's fair. Um, All right. So yeah. So Nathan, how about you? What rogue deck would you like to see do well? Uh, I'm not. I haven't been paying attention to a lot of road decks, but one that I have been seeing is Lost One with Dialga V Star. Ooh. That deck looks really funny, and it's because it plays funny. Comfy, I am instantly a fan. Uh, a lot so of people I have not played it, but it looks it looks great. Yeah, a lot of people are fans of Dialga, waiting for the rotation to happen. I still don't know if that deck is good post rotation either. But shout outs to all the Dialga fans watching. Uh, Mirage Gates don't make great Matangs. So yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, you know, is what it is. <laughs> All right, Piper, how about yourself? Uh, I was going to also say Laws of Dialga. That's definitely one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then that's hot. Two... <laughs> no, I saw a top 32 that won regionals, and I just wanted to, I wanted to top 8 yes. so bad. But uh, two others would. Um, a non Snorlax control because I think Snorlax is lame, um, and normal control variants are cool. Like Mewtwo, I miss Mewtwo. Yes, I, I wish that thing was viable Same. still. But um, you play Gardevoir I guess, Mewtwo V Union? No, it's it's bad. <laughs> um, Tordzard would also be cool to see do well again. Mm -hmm. um, that deck's just cool. Yeah, but yeah, thirty five one of is awesome. Yes, it is. All right, Mark. Could have gotten more. It could have gotten more. I'm just saying. I'll Cut Iona for Roxanne. The secret you know, leaks like... uh, available on our Patreon and also <laughs> after this metaphor. Um, could have played a Pokemon Go Charizard uh, EX as well. That, that, Honestly. Yeah, something that they could have done. Uh, fancy. Play like an Irida. Yeah, like extra, extra consistency. Yep. And a one-of. <laughs> We're breaking right, the meta um, here. Breaking the meta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark, what's your favorite rogue deck that you want to see do well at Vancouver? 
I want to say cloth because I lose to it so much. But like as I've I, as I stated, as like the person looks at numbers and it's boomer, like I apologize to everyone that's watching this right now that's lactose intolerant. But based on what happened in Knoxville, like we got to go with the cheese itself, oh, Gold Dango, okay. and the cheesy strings. That deck did come second at an event, and I think when that deck you know draws hot and is able to. Yeah. Make it rain, <laughs> you know. Your opponent's very upset, and they're just winning. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put uh, Gold Dango up there. Fair, fair. I want to see somebody on stream actually make it rain with their energy cards. But, um, That's like the amp. Yes, you know? they, they amp you very much. All right. We we forgot to put cloth in the send off section. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you lose you lose the spicy season curry. No it's curry. so bad though. Uh, rip. It also takes no, we get that Pokemon that burns. Um, the one that evolves from Slugma, uh, okay. Macargo. And oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when your opponent switches, they get burned. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you you get Walking Wake now too. Cool. So you just don't play Electrode. You play Wake, and you only go for Poison. There you go. Solid. <laughs> it's fixing cloth one card at a time. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Alright, Josh, what's your favorite? Have you looked at Walking Wake's energy cost? I have. I didn't okay, say that okay. was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Raihan did rotate. Yeah. You can Palkia. Palkia onto it. Hey, if you're ever looking to go... O3, okay, we're cooking now. you're ever looking to go O three 3 at a challenge, talk to Josh about cloth post <laughs> Uh, Josh, what's your favorite rogue deck going into this event? Uh, I don't think any of them are going to do particularly well, but I would love to see Zorobox make a run. Zorobox is, like, this is the best position Zorobox has been, okay? It, Moon and Charizard are the two most played decks, so yeah. Tina, Tina theoretically is less... Guardi is... I'm cooking. Listen, <laughs> you beat Mew, you beat Zard, you beat Roaring Moon. If you only hit these three decks, you win the tournament. Okay. I love Zorobox, and I it's also leaving. I know. I think your Maridon matchup's okay. It is, yeah, because you have the Fighting Wormadam. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Wormadam. Okay, okay. Oh, and oh, Hasui and Arcanine, I guess, is even better, because you can't get one-shot I, I by... Yeah. I think true. it's 130 HP, so you don't get one-shot by hands, right? Yeah. I have no idea. Well... Have you ever seen someone have to read Mighty Enna when they're playing Mew? Because that happened to me at a regional. <laughs> that the Mighty Enna came up, and the person had to, like, picked up and read the Mighty Enna and was just like, oh. I uh, I played a Charizard against a Zoro Box once, and I had Lost City in my list. And uh, I waited for them to evolve into the Scovellion. I slapped down that Lost City so fast, and they had nothing. It just I own with them to death the rest of the game. Play great. two. You play two. I do play two, um, but yeah, uh, it's. Uh, it, I would love Zor. I love Zora Box too, Josh. I I do. Rest in peace, Zora. Uh, you you never had your time to shine, but maybe maybe it's uh, it's the time now. So we'll Sander had that one Zora Box control. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Like right after COVID, that one was awesome. That was fun. Yeah, I like top that. sixteen with it, right? I think so. Uh, top eight. Did he top eight? Okay. I mean, yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you, Sander. As so, always, thank you, Sander. <laughs> Sander. We need him yeah, back. Honestly. Yes, <laughs> bring him back. All right. So that's uh, that's going to be it for this meta forecast for Vancouver. Thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to give everybody their chance to shout out anybody at home or any sponsors that they have uh, one at a time here to close things out. Nathan, we'll kick it back to you. Awesome. Uh, you should go follow me on Twitter at EngineTCG, spelled N-G-I-N-T-C-G. Uh, shout out my sponsor, TC's Rockets. Great store in San Diego. Uh, also, shout out Celebrations Kyogre. I'm going to miss you. So, yeah, that's the biggest one. <laughs> All right, Piper, where can everybody find you or any shout outs you want to give? Uh, yeah, my Twitter is just my name, Piper Lapine. Um, I'm also on Metafy for coaching, if you want to check that out, I guess. Um also, shout out to my sponsors, DDG and Dragon Shield. And um, shout out to Yogaloot Metacham. Gonna miss that one. Played it in Arc Intel for some reason, but you know. Yep. It was okay. <laughs> All right, Mark, any uh, shout outs or sponsors? Where can the people find you online? Yeah, you can find me on X uh, at Mark Dizon. Uh, my name over there. Shout out to my sponsor, Game Time Collectibles. You can use code uh, Coach Mark at it's GameTime.ca to get all your cards. I got all my cards today. I got my 
my prime catchers. I'm really excited to play new format. Uh, you can also catch me on a podcast called the Experience Share Podcast. You can find that on YouTube and Spotify. And I'd like to shout out uh, my fiance and my dog for letting me be on this podcast because they wanted to spend time with me tonight. So Ice Rider Kyle Rex, shout out to that too. I'm going to miss that one. All right, Josh, any shout outs or? Uh, yeah. Events? Shout out to the Shuffle Squad, <laughs> goaded sponsor, uh, TSS Win. TSS Win. You can find me on Twitter at DreamJew. Uh, that's dream, like when you go to sleep, and Jew, like Jew. Uh, and then you can find me on Metify at metify.gg forward slash at Josh hyphen Frank. Uh, and then, yeah, a shout out, shout out Rapid Strike Urshifu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gone too well, soon. I can't wait for gone to never soon. see that again. Thank you so much for all the money you gave me, bro. You're a real one. <laughs> it was a real one for sure. Um, and one last time, I'm PJ here with the Shuffle Squad. If you do want to get any cards for the upcoming formats too, I know we've been kind of teasing that. You could definitely check out the sponsors of the Shuffle Squad down below in the description of the video here. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Kayfabe Collectibles, where you can actually pre-order a lot of those cards for temporal forces or the current format now to get everything that you need for EUIC or any of the uh, next upcoming formats and just pick them up at Vancouver regionals. Uh, so you're going to want to do that too. Uh, shout out to my wife and kids who I'm not going to see for a whole bunch of weeks here because I'll be traveling all around the world um, and doing all kinds of cool Pokemon things and uh, shout out to Candace for uh, Jarek and Jem and we'll catch you next time here on the Shuffle Squad. Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video Thanks again. Take it easy.